My name's Jeff, and I love beer. I don't just mean that I love to drink it, though. I mean I'm passionate about the history of beer, how it's made, and what's in store for the future of beer. Some might call me a beer snob, but I see it a bit differently. I want to learn about all beers. It's time to go exploring in the world of beer. Vegas is fun and all, but its little brother Henderson often gets lost in that Sin City shuffle. You shouldn't forget about Henderson though, because apparently there's a booming craft beer scene happening here. This is an area known as the Booze District, and apparently that means we're on the right path to finding places that pique our interest. More importantly, they're gonna quench our thirst. Our first stop is the Craft House Brewery, and it's the passion project of a husband and wife team that wanna bring better beer to this area, so much so that they've worked hard to change the licensing and make it easier for new breweries to come in. Additionally, there's a team of brewers here that have traveled the globe learning about their favorite beers. That sounds like a recipe for hopsess. That's, that's a horrible pun, and I apologize. I clearly need more beer to think of better things to say. Uh, how long have you guys uh, been up and running? We opened September 12th of last year, so about five months. Awesome, and how's it been so far? It's been great. We've seen an overwhelming response from our community. Uh, they're happy to come into a drinking establishment that doesn't have gaming, video yeah, gaming machines sure. or smoking, because we are uh, Las Vegas area and most people are used to the Nevada style brew pub, yeah. which we are not. <laughs> there's a, so there's no smoking in here? No. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> that is such a great relief yes. from being out on the strip or most places in Vegas. Well, it's important that you smell your beer right, as long as right. taste your beer. Very good. There's no smoky haze hanging no. in here. Um, so what, what kind of beer do you guys like to make? Bes I mean, you've got the Saison and uh, the IPA and stuff like that. Is there anything else you guys have done or, or are looking to try? Uh, we are influenced by a lot of uh, Belgian styles, so that's why our first core was a Saison. Um, we like to play around and experiment, and we like to tweak and find a traditional recipe and then tweak it with something fun and interesting or innovative uh, new way to brew it. Now, s, &S in the back, the brewers, where'd you guys, where'd you guys meet them? Uh, Steve and Steph are originally from Australia. Steve is from uh, Perth, and Steph is from Adelaide. Uh, they met when they were going to brewing school. We were both back at home. Uh, we'd both graduated from Edith Cowan University's Brewing Sciences course. Uh, we're both about two and a half years into our jobs and yeah, we just both decided that we probably need to kind of get out on the road and travel. Uh, when you actually do learn at a university, brewing texts only go up to a certain point. There's so much new technology and, okay. and new techniques that are being uh, taught and, and practiced across the US. Uh, sure. and it's, it's a lot of this stuff like sour right. aging and barrel aging and stuff. You know, people that are doing it are at the cutting edge of what they're doing. Okay. So it's kind of get up and go see what other people are doing. So uh, what type of crowd do you see rolling through Craft House? We actually have a large demographic. Um, originally we thought we would have a younger demographic, but we're finding actually that we're getting a wide range. You know, we're getting individual people coming through, we're getting older couples coming through. Um, it's really interesting. And we also thought that we would just be mostly getting locals right. um, coming in and appreciating what we've created here. But we're finding that people also are making the trek from the strip. They might be in town for a bachelor party, they might be in town for a business conference. Sure. They appreciate and respect craft beer. It's in their city where they're from and they want to kind of go you know, to a place that reminds them of their home yeah. and they'll yeah. uh, kind of find us out and we're about 15 minutes off of the Las Vegas Boulevard so we're not too far and for most of those craft beer fans they're willing to make the uh, the trip to come out and hang out and have a yeah, beer. Yeah, just hop in a quick Uber and get your exactly. ass out to Henderson exactly. and have exactly. some really good beer. Uh, how have you been releasing your seasonals? What's what's your because you have you have your 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 mainstays, but you also have some some yeah. tweaked and stuff like that. What's that release schedule been like? We have been doing uh, so far. We've released two seasonals again because we've only been open four months. So our first seasonal was a Resolute Rye. It was mm -hmm. our rye beer, and that was uh, back in the fall and uh, it was a fantastic beer, really enjoyed it. Uh, so much so the community is asking for that to be a core. Yeah. So we're so new, we just we have our two cores and right. then we're doing our seasonals and already people are asking for, for that to be a core. That's Evocation, it's a Saison style ale. Saison, Very smooth. Saison was the first beer that I had with my beer aha moment. Sure. So that's why I named it Evocation, because it evokes the feelings of when I first discovered the, the wonders that craft beer held. It's uh, a Belgian style. 
You get a little bit of lemon and pepper notes in it and uh, very effervescent, very light, very approachable. Um, it was important to us to have our flagship beer be approachable. We know the craft beer community in Las Vegas is still growing. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still transitioning a lot of beer drinkers to the craft. So we wanted something that they could appreciate and understand and not kind of knock them over. So. And it, this is a, a great choice for a variety of beer because it sounds daunting. It's definitely uh, a, a very crafty style in the U.S. still, um, right. but it's such a smooth, easy drinking beer. Exactly. So this is a perfect, it's almost like a gateway beer. That's the whole, that was the reason why. And it's 4.7 ABV, so it's very approachable. People though, when you talk about some of the, the, the different notes and that you know, they can kind of pick up on, so they can kind of get that aspect of it. But again, it's not like an IPA where or something is very intense of course. and it kind of pushes them away. We yeah. want to kind of welcome them yeah. into craft beer. Right. And we think this is a perfect and gateway beer for that. I do I do like that the industry is 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 trending that way because for a while it was IPAs. IPAs were the gateway yeah. beer, but it was, it, I mean, you were killing people with hops. Very much so, so you had to get over it and then you're like, okay, now I get these IPAs. Uh, but on the other side of the hill sits the Saison. Yep. And now though, I think this has transitioned to become the gateway. Beer. These Very much so. and even sours to some, but though that's a little bit more adventurous. Yep. Um, so to start with this and bring this to Vegas is is a, is a good move. Yeah. Well, thanks. And also it's hot. Like people don't realize like right. in Vegas in the summertime it gets really hot. So you don't want to be drinking you know a very large big beer high right. ABV. You know you want something that you know you're cutting the grass. You can grab a beer. Or you're you're out on the boat or at the lake or whatever. So Absolutely. we wanted something that could be a year-round beer here in Las Vegas as well. So eight months of the year it's really hot. So this beer is like light bodied, um, just gentle bitterness. Uh, it's really designed to showcase the yeast character and it throws off a lot of uh, peppery and lemon notes. So we didn't want to complicate that too, too much. Um, it's just got noble hops, so it's lots of stars in there. Um, and that's just to accentuate the lemony notes, so lift it up. Um, we also wanted it at 4.7% alcohol so that you can drink a lot of them. I stay hydrated. I like the idea that you can drink a lot of them. That's fantastic. <laughs> it's a perfect beer for like a Vegas summer. Absolutely. And we've got nine months worth of summer here. Yeah, so. you do. It gets really hot here. It um, does. Are there any styles you haven't done yet here that you're looking to do? Um, you'll see us kind of focus more on hop forward styles and Belgian style beers. So um, people have been getting a little bit of a taste of that. We've got a few specialty batches that we'll be pumping through as well. Besides the beer, you've got some fantastic artwork here. Uh, there's an amazing mural right yeah. behind you. What's the story um, here? Story here, we, uh, again, in fostering the community, we think it's important to uh, support local. And uh, a lot of our products and things that we sell here, merchandise-wise, also are local. Um, and then we also wanted to have a local art piece. So this is released every seasonal. We already had our first artist come in, and she did an amazing job with our rye beer. And, um, the idea was we were going to erase it and then have a new artist come, and the piece was so fantastic. Um, it was very hard to do, but I pulled it off the wall, and it's yeah. hanging up in the brewery. Yeah, chalk um, art as well. Chalk art as well. Can, and how, then can you this was it? yeah, spray it and kind of kind of lacquer it. And then this one, this one when I mounted it, I made sure not to you know adhese it to the wall basically, so that I can actually down. pull it off. Yeah. So um, again, Kelly was the local artist here, and uh, she just did an amazing job. So this was on our Comrade Day. Uh, customers could come in, guests could come in two weeks prior to Comrade Day and watch the live install. Again, That's cool. Come have a yeah. local beer, watch local art going on. Have and a then, beer, uh, watch someone work. Isn't that very, cool? Um, yeah, you very like that? communist comrade <laughs> stouty. That's fantastic. You guys are turning out some wonderful stuff to make people rethink what they know about Vegas. This is delicious, and I gotta thank you guys for that. Cheers. Situated not too far from Craft House sits Curry Wine and Spirits. Don't let the name fool you. Apparently, they've got one hell of a beer selection here. On top of that, they've got a tremendous list of beers on tap. Tonight, they're tapping something new. Furthermore, apparently they do bottle swaps here, which is why I brought something that I think is rather rare and also has a ridiculous name from California. Velvet Merkin, let's go make some friends. Isa, this is a hell of a shop you got here. Hell of a wall of beer. Um, how long have you owned this place? Uh, we opened up in 2004, so 10 years now. Uh, and now, was it always, were you focused on the craft beers, or was that more recent? 
Um, we've uh, evolved into it. I mean, we always carried a little bit of craft beer, but uh, our focus at the very beginning was fine wines. And then just as our customers' interest uh, expanded into craft beers, craft spirits, we, we kind of embraced it. We listened to what they had to say and kind of grew, grew along with it, kept bringing in what they're asking for. Smart. And it's, been, uh, it's been a great success so far. Good, going with the trend. So you're the man who controls the beer here. That, yep, especially on the busier nights. Excellent, excellent. And this seems like a pretty busy night. What's going on? It is bottle share, right? It tends to be our night where we do a bottle share. We also try and tap a more special beer for the you know the community and whatnot. Um, in this case, we have tapped New Belgium's Coco Mole for tonight. That sounds fantastic. Any chance I can get a little sip of that? Yeah, absolutely. You're a good man. I'm have you tried it yourself? I actually have not yet. Oh, well, then I won't. I'll tell you what I think. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't had this year's batch, but I've had it before. That's delicious. There's um, I need a little bit to process. There's almost like a cinnamon uh, Definitely brewed with a bunch of there. different spices. Like yeah, that's... chilies and... Chocolate. The chilies, I'm definitely getting the chilies and the chocolate. You're absolutely right. Uh, so, what's the typical crowd like here? Uh, typical crowd, we get a lot of the locals that come by. Uh, we also get a good few out of towners, especially on the bottle share nights. They like to bring in beers from out of town that you know we normally wouldn't be All able right, to get. That's fun. Yeah. Sure. Well, you know, when we first started coming here, there was only three tap lines over in the corner. Now they have 11. Um, best best uh, tap selection in town. Really? And East has been really great with letting us bring beers that we can't buy in town. Yeah, that's amazing. And enjoy them here with him. That's fantastic. Yeah. The biggest change is probably just the selection. I mean, he had a little shelf pretty much where we were sitting now. As he's put in the new tap handles, the, the distributions have changed hugely. I mean, stuff we get from California that we didn't get a couple years ago, Ballast Point, Green Flash, stuff like that. Kind of surprising to not get something that's so close, you know. Uh, so yeah, the, I was surprised at some of the of <laughs> I was surprised at some of the smaller California breweries like yeah. Cis Montaigne that's made it out here. Yeah. Uh, it's really cool to see some of those guys come out here. But we're drinking. Someone with a bit better distribution, much, much bigger. Right. but I brought it to Vegas, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. Cheers. Uh, absolutely. Thanks, guys. But this this seems like the crowd here is local. This, I mean, this is a local spot. Yeah, almost 100%. But That's yeah, no, we, we get our fair share of, of uh, people traveling through that hear about us, but... Uh, it's usually the locals that recommend us to them, so that's it's always a good sign. That's wonderful. But my, my, my boss is in town, so we brought him out, brought him my guys from work. Yeah. Lots of fun. So you're either going to get a raise or get fired. This is yeah. a brilliant plan on your part. <laughs> either, way, it's, either way, it works out for me because i got some free beer. So. so what do you think? I think it's great. I mean, I really enjoyed it so far. Lots of fun. That's... Way to go. <laughs> Check your email Monday morning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he he makes it fired by Monday. <laughs> Craft beer, especially in the bar industry in Vegas, is very male dominated. Absolutely. So it's awesome to see women rising through the ranks. Uh, how have women climbed through the ranks here in Vegas? Where are they at? What are they doing? There's a lot of women in Vegas. I mean, we have everything from uh, Rose Signer over at Atomic Liquors, who is the GM. She's running some really amazing tap handles, some really cool craft cocktails. Um, as well as the two women, unfortunately I don't know their names, over at Velveteen Rabbit. They're running a really successful bar and craft cocktail industry. Even as well as our very own um, Steph Cope over at Craft House, who is their head female brewer. Yep, we met Steph. She's awesome. She's amazing. Yeah. I love Steph. Yep, that's <laughs> fantastic. Uh, so it's, it's, it doesn't... As much as it seems like it's male dominated, women are kind of kicking ass here in Vegas too. Oh yeah, most definitely. And I actually, not only in Las Vegas, but um, in LA, there is the Golden Road Brewery that is yes. actually featuring. Delicious. Absolutely. They're point the way. Amazing. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yep. I drink it by the pool because they make the cans. <laughs> Great stuff out in California. Love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I try to find something that I'm not uh, used to getting. You know, so he has a lot of uh, exotic beers that are kind of hard to find. So. Whatever is unusual, I like to taste that. They've expanded, uh, great selection of beer, always a good rotation of beer. Um, I'm a craft beer guy, so I, I love having new stuff all the time. Absolutely. I use it on tap, it's, it's always chasing that new beer. Right. right. Um, and Vegas has always been rough, and now sure. we're starting a lot more. You know, we got Almanac now, which uh, some great sours right. yep. out of Northern California, uh, Alpine out of Southern That's California. Huge. Um, yeah, absolutely. And they don't get very far, so we no. got a couple cakes from there, we're loving that. Um, so I, I love coming here, uh, great camaraderie. The guys here are fun to hang out with. Uh, the employees are phenomenal. I mean, it sounds like you found a wonderful place. It sounds like you found a new place and you know he's not getting into too much trouble. Yeah. Not running around the street. Uh, but so, awesome guys, thanks, yeah. cheers. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, cheers. Enjoy your beers. That's That has no beer in it, but we're gonna get him more beer, so don't worry. <laughs> While we were here, we talked to great people, tried some great beer, and I'm gonna grab some stuff that I can't get at home. That's why you come to spots like this. Sometimes when you see a nondescript building, you should know that inside could be something cool. 
This is the Joseph James Brewery, and their motto is that beer is meant to be shared. I'm a little curious as to why they have no tasting room, though. I'm gonna go inside, see if I can make friends with the owner, and maybe sneak a few brews. So David, you're the man who's in charge of taking the beer, putting it into the vessels, and shipping it off to the good people, right? Yep. Awesome, so what's that process like? Walk us through that. Uh, pretty much, basically from where it comes from these guys on this side, from fermentation, it goes over to one of these tanks, uh, it gets carbonated, and then from there we go into 22 ounce glass, 12 ounce glass, 12 ounce cans, and kegs. Excellent. Now, what what is that huge container right there? It says Big Frank. Uh, it's a bright tank. Bright tank. Okay, Happy awesome. Tank. Yeah, very cool. Uh, now, uh, what is this machine here? I, this is a bottling machine, I'm assuming. Yeah, uh, this, this one here is a 22 ounce bottling machine. Uh, and then, so you said you guys do cans as well. How long, how long have you been doing the cans? Uh, coming up on like five years now. So, I mean, that means you guys have been in the can game for a while. It seems like yeah. craft's just getting caught up. Yeah, um, we're, we're actually pushing, trying to push through a lot more cans than we are anything else. We're trying to push more towards cans. Yeah? yeah. Is it um, just more sense financially for cans, or? Uh, it's a lot more, it's, it's definitely a lot more cost effective for cans, and, and also it, the shelf life of the beer will tend to last a little longer. Interesting. In and then you guys do kegs as well? Yeah. Obviously, we're standing yeah. behind a bunch of kegs. Um, now, uh, so labels, everything's in-house as well? Yep. So Matt, you are the director of operations here, and this is one hell of an operation you got going on. Yeah, this is getting, a, uh, bigger every year and pretty much every few months. Uh, staying th busy. This is a, a good part of the, the warehouse to be standing in. Uh, you got a lot of barrels going on. Yeah, I think uh, we're up to about 120 right now. That's crazy. Bourbon barrels. How do you source these barrels? Uh, we have a few different barrel brokers that we go through. There are barrel brokers? Yeah. That's a, that's a brokers. cool job. Uh, they just work with the bourbon companies and then... Yeah, and you get wine, bourbon, tequila. We've had some rum barrels. Uh, we have a few wine barrels. You guys don't have the tasting room here, so where do you guys distribute your beer out to for people to taste? Um, I mean, our two biggest markets are obviously here and uh, Southern California. Um, around town, I mean, there's probably almost not a Every bar you can go into that you can really find us. You guys are one of the big ones in, in, yeah. in town. Yeah. This, Definitely a lot, a lot of properties around town that carry us. All, all the big stores in town carry us. Fantastic. All the leads, total wine. Yeah, excellent. Um, now, how far does your distribution reach extend? Um, from all the way from uh, Washington State to Florida, but not everything in between. Sure. So <laughs> we have a few states um, that we're in. Probably it's hard to keep track, but maybe maybe ten. But um, realistically, Southern California, Arizona here in uh, Florida, Washington, we set a decent It's pretty good reach, there. yeah. So Bryce, you're the uh, young man on the totem pole, huh? The new guy. So what do you do around here besides fetch uh, beers for everybody? Generally help David do whatever he needs to do, make boxes, wax bottles, nice. fill kegs, wash kegs. Sure, and you get to drink. Get to drink. Nice, uh, how'd you get into this? Uh, I've been homebrewing for about three years. Oh, cool. Uh, so I emailed Matt, our brewery director, and decided to drop everything and come to a brewery. See folks, sometimes it's that easy. If you want a job, just ask for it. Yeah, that's right? pretty much how it went. Uh, so what's getting ready to be bottled today? Uh, Hotbox, so Imperial IPA. Excellent, and, uh, and, uh, and what else are you guys rolling through here, uh, brew-wise? Uh, we do a Citra Rye Pale Ale, Stout, um, Lager, Hefeweizen, a bunch of different seasonals, and like right now we've got our bourbon barrel out right now. Oh, nice. waxing all week. Nice. Uh, so is there anything out there besides the sours that you guys are looking to get into adventurous beer-wise? Um, we're going to start a cast program, so we already have all the equipment on that, and we're just kind of waiting for some things to settle down. We'll be doing that, and that'll have a lot of unique one-off and spin-offs on some of the regular beers. Cool. And then s since you guys have been around for seven years, have you done any verticals or anything like that? Um, I don't think we've done any organized ones, but we do do the Bourbon Barrel Imperial Stout for the last, I believe this will be the fifth year. So. There's opportunities for that to in the go future. back in. Yeah. yeah. So David, this is uh, one hell of a room you got here. Yeah. Uh, it was nice and cozy on the other side where you're making the beer, but I mean this room is massive. There's tons of beer behind us. How much? Uh, how many cans fit on a pallet? Uh, Seven thousand seven hundred ninety. Like three pallets of finished beer. So you guys are one of the big players, if not the biggest player here in Vegas. Um, do you find yourself setting trends? Um, I think we do to a degree in Vegas, at least not for the nation or anything by far, but we do more um, one-off experimental things than we do a lot more barrel aging than anyone else. So we probably put out a lot more 
unique beers every year than some of the other breweries in town that are more doing their flagship and an occasional special release. Now, one thing I've noticed here in Vegas, like you're wearing the shirt of another brewery, and then I've seen that at a lot of the other places as well. It seems like a really good community of brewers here, regardless of size. Yeah, no, we all like each other, we're all friends. When you come to Las Vegas, you know that you're gonna be leaving with some memories, be they good or bad. I'm leaving with some great memories of a damn fine craft beer scene. Know this, you can come to this land of themed hotels and casinos, this land of plastic novelty cups brimming with crappy mixed drinks, this land of, dude, just look at my chick's ass. You can come here and find good stuff. We're not gonna end this episode on that trite cliche, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, because I'm bringing home some awesome beers from a beer swap. This is great, Viva Las Vegas. Ah shit, that's a cliche too.